What is this? Do you see do you see how big this is? Wait, wait, wait. Just just wait. This tree is huge and only the beginning of our tour today. I can't wait to share even more with you. Oh my goodness. Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today I have something really interesting planned for us. In fact, we are about to visit this historic house in Astoria. This isn't just any historic house, however. This is one with an epic story that I'm gonna be able to tell you as we move inside. But first, let's check out this beautiful place. Interesting fact, this grove of nine trees is part of the original landscaping that was planted here in 1886 at this Queen Anne style house. So as we're looking at the Captain Flavel trees right here, these are some of the originals. Now, if you are interested in visiting the Flowell House, you have to come into one of a couple places. They do have tickets over at the Oregon Film Museum, but also here at the Flowell House Visitor Center. We are going to pick up our tickets and see what else they have inside. The very first man, Captain Flavel. The couple's first home was located on the southeast corner of the now, it's always super cool to come to a place like this because you get to get some cool brain wrinkles about something that has a lot of interest to all of us. At the end of the day, places like these are what paint the future that we have even going forth. So I thought it was interesting as soon as you come in, not only is there a video that squares away, it's not Flavel, it's Flavel, but also it tells a little bit more about the people and also why this house is here and who maintains it. Did you know that the Historical Society of Astoria actually saved this from being demolished at one point? They were gonna pave it down and put a parking lot there and I can't imagine losing such a gem of a place and we haven't even made it inside just from the exterior it's gorgeous but there's some other cool stuff here too let me let me tell you a little bit more that we'll move over to the main house right now we're in the carriage house so this should put some things into context Flavel is actually the name of a very successful captain who paved the way for a lot of things that are still happening in the Astoria area. He had done so many things, including expanding the docks, expanding warehousing, and also captaining many ships. He purchased a community, actually, called Flavel, Oregon at one point in time and was trying to establish it as one of his business ventures, in fact. And as you look... The Flavel Land and Development Co. right here had a few properties and in its heyday had about 70 people living there. Now it never became a full-blown thing and eventually it kind of got absorbed by the community of Hammond. Despite this venture not working, however, all of his other ones seemed to do just that. And at the end of the day, he wanted to celebrate his accomplishments by building a grand place for his family. And that's what created the Flavel home that we're going to be going into. In fact, he did all of this elaborate architecture and only lived there for a short time before his pass. His family remained in possession of the property for quite some time before it was eventually turned over to the city of Astoria and then to the Historical Society later on. It's been many things, but now it is here for us. So we're going to respectfully go through it, check it out, and um, really have a good time doing that.
Now in the process of bringing this place back to life so we can see it, there are a few photos here where you can see just what kind of condition that it was actually in. It was not in the beautiful condition that we currently see it in. In fact, it had kind of fallen into disrepair and you can see here the historic society is working hard to keep all of those pieces intact and then also recreate the things that had gone astray in the years. Now, something kind of interesting that we learned through the video that you watch when you first come in is this tower right here was specifically designed so the captain could see out in every direction to watch the waterways so that he could see the ships coming in. And I just thought that was really neat. In fact, I always encourage you to stop and take the time to watch the brief video. The brief video fills in all of the blanks and helps you with understanding what it is that makes this place so special. No carriage house would be complete without a couple of carriages. So here we have like a wintertime sled carriage and then also a proper carriage that anyone in this area would have been proud to call theirs. And also there's some information here about the carriage house with some of the visuals of what it would have looked like at the time of the Flavel home being actually an operational home. Ooh, ooh, guys, they even have an activity station here. There are a number of different types of fabrics that can be found in the home. And since we are not allowed to touch, they give us an opportunity to feel what some of those would be like. So here is a mohair, ooh, very interesting, almost like a velveteen feel. A horse hair, that one is very tough and brittle. A velvet, which this one is a bit more soft than the mohair. A Chanel, which is a longer hair, and this one looks like a corded Chanel, so that's very interesting. Of course, lace is extremely delicate, so I can see why they wouldn't want us to touch that in the home. And then silk, very satiny and smooth. In addition, for a bit more context, we have this diagram right here with a corresponding plaque. This is a Queen Anne style home, and you can see, number one, some of the vertical decorations that they have. Number two are some of the wide horizontal bands beneath the brackets. Number three, which is on this side over here, is a shallow square sided bay window above the entry. Number four, which is just above that, is a window crown with molded cornices. And you can see that right there in detail. And then number five, which would be the square porch supports. So all of these are different architectural pieces, but also you'll notice that there are some letters here and those actually also are significant. A, for example, is that it's asymmetrical. B, it has a hipped roof with lower cross gables. C, patterned shingles. And those are primarily seen on the tower up here. And you can see it's a nice little pattern. D, they have a full one-story wraparound porch that was absolutely gorgeous to see while ago. I can only imagine looking out onto the ocean from that. E is cast iron cresting, which sits on the top right up there. And then we have F, which is over here on this side. These are octagonal shaped towers. And again, that is the tower that he would look out in all directions. And G, they have the decorative work above each one of the window moldings. Now they spared no expense. And at the time, this thing cost about $36,000, which doesn't sound like a lot by today's standards, but back in the day, oh my goodness, that would be a very expensive home. They also had indoor plumbing, which had both hot and cold water, they had flushing toilets. And also they had something a little bit crazy at the time. They had a version of central heat and air. In fact, their heat was piped in through the flooring through a system that had grates that would burn up from a wood burning furnace and it would go into each room of the house. Yeah, so this was well above its time and also a super expensive endeavor, but now it's time for us to go look at it in person. As you look at each detail, you notice there are no expenses spared from the design on the floor to the materials that were used to the plaster, actually. 
it's quite fascinating to see all of the beauty of the architecture and just to think that this could have all been gone is super sad. So appreciating places like this is something that I definitely do as I travel and I hope you do too. I think as we move a bit deeper into the home, I'm just gonna show you a lot of the details here because the details were what made this place so special. And so I'm going to give you a tour of each and just kind of give you a glimpse into the world that would have been opulence and beauty and also accomplishment. Because again, this was something to kind of highlight the accomplishments of the captain himself and his family. So with that said, this is going to be a grand tour. Now, a couple of things before I kind of just start on that though. Each one of the rooms have some context as to what you're looking at as you walk in. Also, a couple of quotes are included and some original photos. Now, from these original photos, they were able to adorn the rooms with various items from the period. And it's really nice to be able to put everything into perspective using these. Now, I'm going to make sure that you all see a couple of these and you can stop and pause on the screen. However, you're going to have to come here to look at the remaining ones because each room has quite the history. Also, each room does have a rope so that we do not enter into the space beyond a certain point. That is to keep all of this beauty here for us to enjoy for years to come. So this is here to protect and preserve the space. So make sure you respect that. Believe it or not, guys, this was one of the toilets here, and it has a nice little toilet seat and everything. Now, this room itself is tiny. Bathrooms are typically pretty tiny, though, but look how small this one is. Now, this is a self-guided tour, so once you come over, you can move at your own pace, and I really like that because some people are very interested in seeing specific things, and you can kind of linger in those rooms. Also, there are a few additional things that aren't, of course, um, from the time, like, like that guy, but you know, it is what it is. Now, this is actually pretty interesting. This is the conservatory, and it has been set up for a five-place setting, and this was for each one of the flavels. And they could also entertain guests in this room. Now, you can see here some suggestions for breakfast and lunch, and uh, these are some pretty hefty breakfasts and lunch, I must say. But there are actually two very interesting dining options in this particular room. This one right here... And of course, this one in the main area. Yeah. 
Now, why did they have these two options? Well, because they could do their breakfast in the little breakfast nook area, and then they could do their fine dining in the larger area. And the interesting thing is, this could actually be closed off also. So they could also entertain guests and children and things like that in this grand room. It was absolutely amazing to be able to sit down to a community-based dinner with a larger group in this large room, but also to not be bothered by that whenever you just wanted something a little bit more private. This private area actually looks out onto the garden, so I can only imagine during breakfast that would have been amazing. Throughout the entirety of the house, the attention to detail is amazing. Look at these. Just off of the dining room, there is this kitchen wash station and also an area for the dishes. This is called the butler's pantry. Here you would find all of the different kinds of china. And again, some of the information about what the butler's pantry would have been, again, hot and cold indoor plumbing right here. And then additional access to things they would have needed for their service of their meals. Every room here has windows. And all of these windows would have acted as the air conditioning of the time also for additional airflow. This is the kitchen, as you can see. And here we have what would have been a refrigerator and then also a cooktop and cook stove. And uh, a little bit different than what we have now, but this did the trick and could serve quite a few people, actually. I love how they have the different baking items here so you could see how Basic things could have been done inside of this space. And also the warming closet on the top. This is a fabulous piece. Another nice deep sink in the kitchen here. And again, opening of those windows would have given a little bit of additional airflow. So this normally hot space could have been a little bit cooler. Now something kind of interesting that I've always thought was fascinating is how they created chairs using either leather or a version of a weaving and just very basic setup here. They have a couple of these in the kitchen. The kitchen also appears to be the home of the laundry. This is an old school laundry system so somebody would have had to have washed and wrung out all of the different items using this. A lot different than our modern technology. Oh, this is a beautiful little room just off here to the back and it tells you a little bit more about the gardens and the grounds and also the carriage house which all can be seen through this window right here. Now the home has elaborate design, but also some really unique ceiling heights. In fact, the ceilings are 14 feet tall. So very large. So whenever you walk into even the smallest of room, it feels so grand. It's amazing. Featured here, we have an item that you would have found on top of the home and also some of the additional things that we would have found. So the large yellow thing I'm about to show you is this. And then the black things are actually these. The yellow is actually called the sunflower. And it is an ornamental finish that they put on the top of the home. And I think you can see why it gets that name. It's pretty neat. Now, putting something like this on top of your roof actually dates back to well before this was done. In fact, in China and Japan, they would do this often to kind of put out there into the universe the positive vibes that they wanted. Sunflowers, for example, attract prosperity. And because he was already celebrating the prosperity that he'd had in his career, very, very fitting. The details are amazing here. There's so many tiny details. It is at this time that we walk into the bedroom. In fact, there are several bedrooms here. And as you walk through, you'll hear an occasional creak of the floor and you can only imagine what it would have been like to be in this room living this life. Now, this room right here is very large. I mean, they have their own sink and wash basin. It's a large bed with two rockers an ornate rug, and an actual closet. This was not just a small closet either. It was a walk-in closet. And inside you'll find some of the suits that the captain might have had at the time. Then there's this 
a small piece of what looks like wallpaper. I wonder if this was the original or if it came after. Each one of these mantles was actually brought in from Portland. They were hand carved, absolutely beautiful. And the fireplaces themselves, each are a little bit different and unique. This one is actually the one that is in the captain's bedroom. He actually passed away in this very room at the age of 69. It was only a short time after the house was completed that that happened. He wasn't very old, but 69. He passed away in the same arrangement of the bed that's currently here. I think it's kind of fascinating to be able to come into a space to this level because we are in this space and being able to visualize what it would have been like to live here. And I can say it's very opulent. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I appreciate all of the details that they have preserved, such as these. At the bottom of the floor, you see one of these vents. This was what actually brought the heat to the room. And this was a large room, so it must have taken a lot of heat to push out all the way over to that bed. But right next to the captain's bedroom, we have an additional bedroom. As we walk through this door right here, there it is, there it is. Looking around, we see that this was actually Mary Christina's bedroom and here you find a few family portraits and a nice dressing table. What we now know to be a version of a chaise. Again, elaborate carpets that would keep the room feeling warmer while they were inside. And a few other things, including a couch that is in the tower. This tower area looks as though it provided a great reading nook and plenty of light. You could open up different shutters and shades and let light in or keep it out. This would be very cozy. Now, after the captain's passing, his children actually took over along with his wife, the family home, and they started to travel and live their lives and do exciting things. And whenever they weren't on the road traveling to somewhere across the pond, they were here in Astoria, typically during the summertime. They would leave for the winter because it was just so harsh but they could always come back here and have a little taste of home. And that's what they did for many, many years. We are now in Nellie's bed chamber and you could see what a closet of the time might've looked like for a woman. You can see a variety of different things that are very different from the men's things that were in the other closet. But again, another walk-in style closet right here. Now these are protected by a little wall, so you can't go in there, but you're still getting to be in the room with the bed and all of these beautiful other things. And I think it's absolutely gorgeous to be able to walk through. Now this room is a different color and each one has had its own unique personality to suit the person living in it. And I think that that's absolutely wonderful. The pink touches complement the pink walls. Again, plenty of natural light could get in, and the windows here go almost all the way up to the ceiling, so these are sizable windows. In addition, these windows could be opened so that they could provide airflow. There is a Jack and Jill sink here that goes into the next room, which actually is one of the smaller rooms, I feel, and this one is an average size room probably for most people, but it has a small twin bed here with a trunk for storage, a beautiful fireplace again, and some really amazing armoire action over here. Now there is also a door, but I don't think that we can go in this one. Nope, not today, but just look at all of the sunflower adornment that they have even here. That is very complimentary of the prosperity that they were actually celebrating by their roof garnish too. So what would it be like to not be a family member, but instead to be a guest? Well, this room right here, that's, that's the experience that you get if you were to be a guest here, and it's fabulous. A guest visiting the home would have a beautiful, beautiful view of the garden. This side over here faces out to the garden and the carriage house in that direction. And you can see a nice size bed, couch. There's even a little space for a baby here. They have a nice 
big mirror over here. Another one of these gorgeous imported fireplaces. This is amazing. Now there is a closet to this room in addition to having a dresser over here also. So there would have been plenty of places for you to unpack and unwind while visiting the family. Now there are a few doors that are closed and locked. Don't know what's behind them. It's just part of it. It is what it is, guys, but we can't go in here. Okay, so you cannot go up to the attic space, but they have included what the attic space actually looks like. And it is a massive room in itself. Look at this. Although I'm pretty sure that's also where the creepy crawlers would probably be in an older home, especially. This is considered to be the activity room. And there's lots of things that can be interacted with in this room right here. In fact, this is the hands-on room. So you can touch, play, and see what it would have been to have some of the toys and the experience of being in this home. It's kind of interesting because it shows you what it would have been like to even get dressed. And they have a closet filled with cute things that the kiddos can put on and learn a little bit more about the history also. A lot of times in places like this, they aren't exactly the most kid-friendly because they have all the ropes in the places that you can't be. A lot of breakable things. So I like that they're incorporating a room that is designed for kids because this gives them a space also so they can come and learn about the history, which I think is so important, but at the same time, that takes away the uh, want for touching a little bit by, by giving them a zone that they can do it in. <laughs> but yeah, we're about to move on to the next room and see what else we can find. Ooh, in this next room, we have another bathroom. This one is much larger because guess what? They have a bathtub. Now this is on the same level as all of the bedrooms, so it completely makes sense. This bathtub is pretty large for the time, but at the same time, pretty small compared to a lot of our bigger tubs now. Now, something I thought was kind of neat though is the bathtub is right next to this beautiful view again of the garden. So you could be looking outside while you're taking a bath or you could close the shutters for privacy. All of the toilets have these lids that close so that they can. And this sink is a very tiny little sink, but there's tons of space here for laying things out. Although I will say this, there's no mirror. There's no mirror. That's because at the time, people didn't get ready in the bathroom like we do so often now. Now, people put their makeup, they put their hair products and things like that right here. But before, they had space in their rooms. That's why they had dressing tables. So that's kind of an interesting one. This is actually the staircase to the attic, but again, we cannot go up there. So instead, we're going to take the staircase down back to the first floor. And as we prepare to exit, this was something that caught my eye. This on the other side looks like a little bell. And so you would be able to either do a knocker or a bell ring on the door here, and that would let you in. But again, notice the ornate sunflower detail. I have thoroughly enjoyed coming here and sharing with you this historic home. It's gorgeous, and I'm so glad that they saved it off of the demolition block. Without that, we wouldn't have been able to hear the story of this magnificent family. The captain himself did so many things in the Astoria area, and I'm pretty excited about being able to see the opulent home that he built to celebrate all of his accomplishments. It's absolutely gorgeous, and definitely an architectural feat that you will want to come and see. This Queen Anne has stories to tell and you will want to come and see them. Remember guys, we're not here for a long time, but we are here for a good time. And sometimes just soaking in the beauty and learning a little bit about the past is that. Until next time guys, bye.